Question 8a, the table in part a part 2 below shows sum of the values of the function h of x in the domain 0 to 75. a part 1, use h of 10 equals 30 to show that p is equal to 3.6. So this one is basic enough. Basically, all they're getting us to do here is sub in 10 for our x and letting it equal to 30. That's about it for this first part of the question. So we're finding h of 10 is equal to 0 0.001 and my bracket and it's cubed here so 10 cubed minus 0 0.12 times 10 to the power of 2 plus p times 10 plus 5. When I evaluate that uh, 10 cubed multiplied by 0 0.001 is 1 um, minus 0 0.12 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2 is 12, so minus 12. P multiplied by 10 is 10P, and then plus 5. And as I said, we know that our value here must equal to 30. And 1 take away 12 plus 5 is minus uh, 6, plus 10P is equal to 30. And adding 10 to both sides, or moving over that negative 6, is giving me 30 uh, plus 6, which is 10p is equal to 36. Dividing across by 10, 36 divided by 10 is giving me a value of p of 3.6. And that's what they wanted us to do there, um, or to show in part A. Part 2, complete the table below and hence draw the graph of h of x in the domain 0 to 75 on the grid below. So what they basically want us to do there is you're subbing in the x value on each one. So they've done, um, let's say, the second one there first. They've subbed in 10 for x into my uh, function, and they've got out a result of 30. So when I sub in 0, I get 5. When I subbed in 20, I got 37. When I subbed in 30, I got 32. 50, I got 10. 70, I got 12. So they're the uh, the couples basically, my inputs and my outputs. I'm now going to just sketch them onto the uh, curve or onto the graph now. Okay, so uh, my second last one is 70, 12. So I'm coming across from 12 to 70, which is roughly about here. And my final one is 75 21.8 so 75 which is here and i'm going up uh, to 21.8 which is roughly around here okay so there are my uh, coordinates and now sketch a freehand curve of the graph which looks something like that so as you can see in the question if you just scroll back up you can see that it is a cubic function a positive cubic function and that's what we sketch. So always just take a step back, have a look at the function that you're asked to sketch, and by memory, does it look like what it should? And we can see here that it is a cubic. Okay, uh, looking now at part B. So that's A done. Uh, B part one is telling us the function h of x can be used to model the height above level ground in meters of a section of the path followed by a roller coaster track where x is the horizontal distance from a fixed point find h dash of x so that's our derivative of h um, so basically all we're doing is differentiating the function here so i'm multiplying my power 3 by 0 0.01 well actually let's just write down our original function here first of all uh, h of x is equal to 0 0.001 x cubed uh, minus 0 0.12 x squared uh, plus uh, 3.5, no, 3.6 x, it was, uh, plus 5. And when I differentiate that, 3 multiplied by 0 0.001 is 0 0.003 x, reduce my power. And this is the derivative of h of x. Uh, minus 0 0.12 by 2 is minus 0 0.24 x, and I reduce my power. And then when I differentiate 3.6x, I just get positive 3.6, and I drop my constant. And that's the derivative. Part two, uh, show that this section of track reaches its maximum height 
uh, above level ground when x is equal to 20. So again, this is like your max and mins when you're doing your calculus. So that's when you uh, differentiate and let it equal to zero. So you're letting your derivative equal to zero basically here. And so that is, so therefore my derivative is 0.003x squared minus 0.24x plus 3.6 is equal to zero. And the reason we're letting it equal to zero, don't forget, is that the slope at the maximum turning point on my curve is here and the slope is always flat at a turning point. So that's the reason we're letting it equal to zero. And you can see here, there's also a minimum turning point actually. So when we uh, solve for X now, you'll see that you're gonna get two values, but we just need to be sure which one we're taking as our final solution. Okay, so that's just a little bit of uh, background anyway. So we have a quadratic uh, equation here. So you can use your minus B formula if you want. I'm just gonna keep factorizing it uh, so I'm going to get rid of my decimals by multiplying cross by 1,000. So you don't need to do this. You can go straight to your minus B formula if you wish. That's getting me 3x squared minus 240x, so 240x, plus 3,600 uh, equals to 0. I then see that there's a 3 common, so I'm dividing across by 3, which is giving me 1x squared minus 80x, plus 1200 equals to zero. Now the question is giving me a bit of a solution here. It's telling me that one of my values is x is equal to 20. So when I factorize this, a little bit of common sense here is telling me that one of my original factors must have been x minus 20 because my root is x equals to 20. And 20 multiplied by what is 1200? Well, 20 multiplied by 60. So my other factor must be 60. Uh, minus by minus gives me a plus 1,200 and minus 20 minus 60 is minus 80. So my two roots are x is equal to 20 and x is equal to 60. Now, if you look at your graph, you can see that they are both the turning points on the graph. One's a min minimum and one's a maximum. I'm going to use my mathematics to show which is minimum and which is uh, maximum now. So now show max and which one is min. That's all I'm doing now. In order to do that, you differentiate again, you find a second derivative. So I'm differentiating 0.003x squared minus 0.24x plus uh, 3.6. And that is getting me 0.006x minus 0.12. And the rule tells us then we sub in our values for x. So I'm gonna let x is equal to 20 and let x is equal to 60. So all I'm doing here is I'm proving which one is the maximum. And when I sub it in, I get 0 0.006 uh, multiplied by 20. So I'm subbing in my 20. And on my second one, 0 0.006 multiplied by 60 minus 0 0.12. And when I evaluate both of those, I'm getting minus 0 0.12 and positive 0 0.12. And when you get your negative solution, that is your maximum value. And when you get your positive solution, that's the minimum value. So show that this section of track reaches its maximum height above level ground when x is equal to 20. Well, we have just done that there now. So we didn't need the right-hand side. All we needed to do was sub in the 20. But look, it's good to verify that 60 was not our solution. Okay, that's part B part two, uh, scrolling down now to B part three. It's asking us to find using calculus the height above ground in meters at the instant the track passes through an inflection point. And they've just given us the function there again. Now, point of inflection uh, is always found by finding the second derivative of the function. So that's how you find the point of inflection and you let that equal to zero. Now we have the point of inflection from, or sorry, we have the second derivative from part two and we found it to be 0 0.006x minus 0 0.24. So we have that. And to find the point of inflection, you let that equal to zero. So I'm letting it equal to zero and solving this equation. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to move 
uh, the constants to the right and x is on the left so i'm adding 0 0.24 to both sides so 0.006x is equal to 0 0.24 to get x i'm dividing across by 0 0.006 so 0 0.24 divided by 0 0.006 and that divides in 40 times now a point of inflection must have an x and it must have a y i found my x now i must find y and in order to find y i sub it back into my original function h of x so i'm taking back now my original function just be careful here what you're always subbing back into because you're working with the original function you're working with the first derivative and you're working with the second derivative so just take your time and i'm subbing in h of 40 so 0 0.001 times 40 cubed minus 0 0.12 times 40 squared plus 3.6 times 40 plus 5. I'm just putting my 40 in a different color there to see that I'm substituting in that value. And when I work that out in my calculator, I'm getting a value of h of 40, which is y in other words, of 21. So therefore, just write it out here, my point of inflection is going to be 40 comma 21 and the final part is part c use the function h of x once again to find the average height of this section of track above level ground from x 0 x 75 so the key word here or key words is average height give your answer in meters corrected two decimal points so this is your average value so we're into our integration here your average value is found by going 1 over b minus a uh, times the integral so we're going from 75 the highest value to the lowest value of 0 of 0 0.001 x to the power of 3 minus 0 0.12 x to the power of 2 plus 3.6 x plus 5 so first thing I need to do now is uh, integrate that h of x and my a and my b, my b is 75 and my a is 0. So it's 1 over 75 minus 0 and I'm multiplying that then by my integral. Now when I integrate it, I increase my power and divide by my new power. So 0 0.001 x to the power of 4 all over 4 minus 0 0.12 x to the power of 3 so i increase my power divide by my new power 3.6 x to the power of 2 divide by my new power plus 5 x divide by my new power now you don't need to put in your constant here because in a second we are going to be uh subtracting uh when i sub in zero from the 75 so you're just going to have c minus c which will cancel so i don't bother putting in the c but you can if you want in these so that is giving me one over 75 and i'm going to just do a little bit of shortcuts here if you don't mind what i'm doing here is i'm going 0 0.001 times 75 to the power of four all over four minus and so on and so on i'm basically subbing in 75 for x then what I'm doing is I'm going to subtract me subbing in 0 for x. 0 0.001 times 0 to the power of 4 all over 4 and so on and so on and so on. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of a corner here just for speed that I'm not going to bother subbing them all in. But that's basically the process here. So I'm subbing in my 75, subbing in my 0 and I'm taking them away from each other. So that's going to leave me with 1 over 75 and when I go to my calculator and I do the subbing in for 75 I got 1535.15625 and when I sub in 0 I just get 0 because x is being multiplied by a coefficient and x is 0 so 0 by anything just gives me 0. So that's 1 over 75 times 1535.15625 when I multiply that together I'm getting 20.46875 the question wants it to two decimal points so that is equal to 20.47 meters so the average height is 
0.47 meters. And that's our solution.